My chapter on spacing talks about the intelligent sequencing of lessons and the strategic distribution of content to enhance long-term learning. Now, Teacher 1.0 has been doing this particularly bad for the last few decades, and I'll include myself and most of the teachers in that. Traditionally and historically, we've taught in blocks. And what that means is it will teach everything to do with one theme or one part of our subject all at once, and then we'll test it. What this also means then is that the information is still in students' short-term memory, so when we test them, they probably do quite well. As teachers, we then take that information and take those test results and demonstrate that students have learned the information, they've remembered it, and they've made significant progress. But we all know in the days and weeks after those tests and after that subject blocking, lots of students will forget everything that we've taught them. So when it comes to the exams at the end of the year, they find it really, really difficult to remember that information from the start of a two or three year GCSE course. The research behind this is quite startling and it comes from Ebbinghaus's 1885 forgetting curve. And yes, that's right. I said 1885, 103 years before I even started secondary school for myself as a student. And this really frustrates me. And this is one of the reasons that it's driven me to write this book is because why on earth has it taken you know, over 120 odd years for that information to start leaking down into classrooms and to the ground for classroom practitioners? Very rarely do I hear trainee teachers talking about this. So somewhere, somehow this is going wrong and that academic information isn't reaching us as teachers. So what does this, um, what does this forgetting curve say? Well, what it says is that in the first few days after instruction, students lose about 40% of that information and that knowledge. And within about a month, they've lost 90% of it. So it's really important that we do something as teachers to make sure that students can actually remember that information. Ebbinghaus says in one of his great quotes is, use it or you lose it. So we've got to do something with it. We've got to use retrieval practice and we've got to really space out our, um, our, our uh, delivery so that students have a little bit of time to forget it before they have to do something with it to retrieve it. And that's the key here. So using spacing with retrieval practice together is a really, really important um, you know, element of this. Um, and, and it's a key feature of this chapter. Teacher 2.0 then talks to you about how you can implement it in your classroom. Um, and two really easy ways is, first of all, having some cumulative testing. So not just testing one topic at a time, but actually when you've done the second topic, test something from the first topic as well. And then in topic three, test something from top topic three, topic two and topic one. So you're continually revisiting that previous content all the time and letting students retrieve that information, do something with it, uh, and that'll lead to far more long-term learning. Uh, another, another quick way to do that is to have some lagged homework. So set a homework task three or four weeks after you've actually taught something. Get the students to almost forget it and have to go back and retrieve it at a later date. You can find out more about this and uh, how you can reboot your teaching with the science of learning in my new book, Teaching Rebooted.